Today is Monday, June 21st. What to know about the path of a deadly storm that's left a trail of damage in at least five U.S. states so far. It's expected to get worse before it gets better. Also, nearly a dozen American mayors promising to pay reparations to black residents. Plus, a possible turning point for the cruise industry, a major U.S. airline cutting flights during a travel boom, and what to buy and what to skip on Amazon's Prime Day. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in about 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Lacey Evans, filling in for Erica Mandy during her maternity leave. You ready? Let's do this. A powerful storm is pounding the east coast of the U.S. Tropical Depression Claudette is now threatening the Carolinas, and it's expected to strengthen back into a tropical storm this morning. That means people need to prepare for torrential rain and flooding and possible tornadoes. Already, Claudette left a deadly trail of damage across parts of the south, mostly in Alabama. A man and a child were killed when a tree fell on their home. Ten more people, including nine children, died in an Alabama crash. Officials say it happened when their vehicles hydroplane on wet roads. Overall, strong winds, heavy rains, and tornadoes were reported in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, and Mississippi, damaging or destroying dozens of homes. Claudette is the third named storm of the year for Atlantic hurricane season, and there are likely a lot more coming. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is predicting an above-average hurricane season. It expects about 13 to 20 named storms. The season runs through the end of November. A controversial political figure is now set to become Iran's new president, and this could complicate things for American diplomats. Ibrahim Raisi was elected over the weekend. He's a conservative judge who has strong ties to Iran's supreme leader, or Ayatollah. The U.S. sanctioned Raisi two years ago over alleged human rights abuses. He's accused of playing a role in mass executions of political opponents back in 1988, as well as the deadly crackdown on protesters in 2009. And that's just to name a couple of the accusations against him. Beyond that, Raisi is seen as a more confrontational opponent to the U.S. Analysts think he will resist the U.S. trying to limit Iran's military activities in the Middle East. However, he appears open to a new nuclear deal, which American diplomats have also been pushing for. But it's not clear yet what his terms might be. Remember, the original deal from 2015 was meant to keep Iran from building nuclear weapons, but the U.S. left it a few years ago. At the time, the Trump administration argued Iran was breaking its promises, so the U.S. got out and put new tough economic sanctions on Iran instead. Well, now, Now, Raisi wants those sanctions lifted, and he might be open to a compromise. Nuclear talks are set to resume next month. Raisi is set to be sworn into office in six weeks. Back in the U.S., at least 11 mayors are promising to pay reparation money for slavery. They're from big cities like Los Angeles, California, and Denver, Colorado, as well as small towns like Tallahassee, Oklahoma. Each mayor says they'll pay small groups of black residents in their cities, and they're hoping to set an example for the federal government on how a national program could work. So far, they don't have details about how much this effort is going to cost, who's going to pay for it, or how the recipients will be chosen. Still, the AP is calling this the largest city led reparations effort to date. Advocates say reparations are a way to right the wrongs caused by slavery, segregation, and housing discrimination. Though critics have argued Americans today shouldn't have to pay for crimes in the past, or that these payments are ineffective at addressing the real issue of inequality. Either way, more cities, states, or even the federal government could end up following suit. Democrats in the U.S. House are pushing a bill to study reparations, and California created a task force to weigh the idea last year. To be continued. The COVID-19 variant that's been powering severe virus outbreaks in India is now becoming the dominant strain around the world. At least that's according to the World Health Organization. It's happening because that Delta variant is so highly contagious. In fact, studies have found Delta is between 40 to 80 percent more contagious than previous strains. So far, it accounts for around 10 percent of cases in the U.S. But the CDC director says she expects it to become the dominant strain here, too, in the coming months. The issue with that is it keeps mutating, and the CDC worries it could eventually mutate to make vaccines less effective. 
However, so far, that hasn't been the case, and vaccines are said to be able to tackle even the Delta variant. Speaking of vaccines, President Biden announced another milestone over the weekend. Since he took office, more than 300 million COVID-19 shots have been given. That's on top of nearly 17 million during the Trump administration. And it means more than half of the total population has had at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. 45 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated. Granted, the U.S. still has a long way to go. In the past, the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, has said anywhere from 70 to 85 percent of the population needs to be vaccinated for the U.S. to reach herd immunity. Much more news in a moment. But first, your main host, Erica Mandy, is here to talk about this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. I know the past year plus has been especially stressful, but you still deserve to be as happy as possible to achieve your goals and feel like your best self. And I know one great way to do that is through therapy. I think of it as going to the gym, but for our mental health. And BetterHelp makes it so easy. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's convenient. You can start communicating in less than 24 hours. And it's confidential. You always connect in a safe and private online environment. This is not self-help and it's not a crisis line. This is professional counseling where you can send your counselor a message anytime, plus schedule weekly video or phone sessions. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a Newsworthy listener, you'll get 10% off your first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Join more than a million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, go to betterhelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. The cruise industry is one step closer to getting back to business. A Royal Caribbean ship set sail from Miami last night, but no paying customers were on board. Instead, the ship was carrying about 600 employee volunteers, along with the CDC representative, to test COVID-19 health and safety measures. Everyone was vaccinated. The idea of a trial cruise was laid out as a requirement by the CDC, but it's possible not every cruise line will have to follow it. You may remember the state of Florida sued the CDC over strict regulations like that. Florida's governor argued they weren't rational because more people are getting vaccinated and other industries like airlines, hotels and restaurants have been allowed to reopen. So he said cruises should too. And on Friday, a federal judge agreed. He says starting next month, cruise lines can ease up on the rules if they're leaving from Florida ports. Those rules include the trial voyages, testing sites on each ship, and a seven-day limit on the length of each voyage. Now, instead of hard rules, the CDC will have to call them recommendations or guidelines. So far, the CDC has not responded to the judge's ruling, but Florida's governor is calling it a victory. American Airlines is cutting flights in response to a surge in passengers. Yes, you heard that right. The issue is the airline is dealing with maintenance and staffing issues. So American says it's cutting flights in places where there are more options to get people where they need to go. And that could help avoid last minute cancellations elsewhere. The airline canceled more than 300 flights over the weekend, and it plans to cut dozens of flights every day for the rest of this month. About a thousand more flights planned for the first half of July are also getting scrapped. In in the meantime, American and other major airlines are racing to hire more workers. American, Delta, and United Airlines have all been going on hiring sprees this month. Snapchat's controversial speed filter is now gone from the app. When people used that filter, you could see how fast they were going. It's been around since 2013. But safety advocates have long worried it's encouraged young drivers, especially teenagers, to drive irresponsibly. And the social media app has faced lawsuits from families whose loved ones have been hurt or killed in car crashes. Over the years, Snapchat has made changes. At first, Snapchat made the speed feature harder to find by making it a sticker instead of a filter. The sticker also included a warning warning that said, don't snap and drive. Then Snapchat capped the shareable driving speed at 35 miles per hour. Well, the company now says it decided to delete the feature from the app because it's rarely used anymore. Amazon Prime Day is officially underway, and the retail giant says this is the largest Prime Day ever, with more than 2 million items on sale. But discounts are available only to Amazon Prime members. The event kicked off at midnight Pacific time and lasts 48 hours. CNBC suggests shoppers look for deals on things like smart home devices, laptops, tools, and pet products. You can also expect good deals on summer clothes and beauty products. But not everything is considered a bargain. A retail-me-not shopping analyst told CNBC shoppers 
developers should hold off on video game consoles, cameras, and Apple products because they'll find better deals for those items on Black Friday. And by the way, Amazon isn't the only place to find discounts this week. Other major retailers have gotten into the habit of offering deals during Amazon's Prime Day event, too. Special sales are going on at Walmart, Target, Kohl's, Best Buy, Home Depot, and more. Two of the biggest boy bands of the 1990s have joined forces. Four members of NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys teamed up for a Pride event over the weekend. Lance Bass and Joey Fatone of NSYNC, along with Nick Carter and AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys, were involved. They performed under the name BackSync at an event that raised money for LGBTQ organizations like the Trevor Project and LA Pride. And this may be the first of many collaborations. AJ McLean teased fans with a TikTok video suggesting he, Carter, Fatone, and and Bass were working on a new album together as Backsync, but he says the two bands wouldn't go on tour unless they could convince all 10 former members to participate. And that's it for your main news today, but now it's time for Money Monday, where we talk about one interesting money-related news story. Today, we're talking about a new trend on Wall Street. Kids as young as 13 are now legally trading stocks. Fidelity is helping fuel the trend. It recently launched a program called the Youth Account. It lets teens buy and sell stocks and mutual funds, and it comes with a debit card. Kids under 18 need a parent's permission to sign up, and parents can receive alerts about transactions and close their kids' accounts at any time. Fidelity says its program can help teach teenagers about money management. Supporters also say the program could allow teens to save significantly more money over the long term because of compound interest. But not everyone thinks this is a good idea. Critics argue making stock trading as easy as playing a game could be harmful for teens. And since they're inexperienced, they might make risky bets. That's the same argument lawmakers have made against new online brokers like Robinhood that appeal to less experienced traders. For now, only about 55 percent of Americans own stocks, and that percentage includes people with 401k and IRA retirement accounts. All right. Thank you for listening today. We'll be back with much more news tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 